Hey folks, back T back, and I have a used oil sample for the Triax Synergy SRT oil, and uh, that was a 5W30 PAO synthetic uh, marketed by Triax. And uh, you know, let's go ahead and jump into this because, uh, yeah, I'm moderately happy with it. Anyway, we got the Triax, and we got the the note from Blackstone and it tells us our 3.5 Duratec is still wearing well after uh, 10,930 miles or 200 hours of oil use. Aluminum, piston, bearings, and iron steel parts are a little higher than usual, but both metals are still well within the range of the universal averages, so we don't have concerns of poor wear. The increase could be a result of how the engine was driven during this run. For example, taking frequent short trips or opposed to long highway drives. We'll be interested to see how the trend develops. And the oil was in good physical condition with a slight additive left. And uh, they said I could try for 13,000 miles with this oil. So, but as it goes, I do 200 hours and that's pro generally where I stop. So we're not going to go any further than that. But anyway, 200 hours of use, mostly highway, and uh, the aluminum was 6. Now this is a departure from my past 2s, 4s, and 5s that I had. The chromium was 1, and that's a departure from the 0 that I've had in the past. Uh, the iron was at 12, which is a, it's a good departure from where I was. I was running a 6, 8, 4, 5, and 3 in past oil tests. Uh, copper was at 3. And that is right in the spec with everything else, so there's no change on the copper. The lead was zero, which is consistent with everything I've been doing. Uh, the tin was at one, and that is uh, somewhat consistent with some of the other oil tests, is either zero or one. Um, molybdenum uh, was at 21, and that is definitely the one of the lower ones. I did have one at a 13, but overall that was the second lowest molly be uh, additive that I've had in any oil that I've ran. Uh, the nickel was at zero. The manganese was at two, which is somewhat consistent with what, what I've been having. Uh, the silver was at zero, which is consistent. Uh, titanium was at two, and that is, uh, yeah, it's right there consistent. Some oils don't have any titanium in them, so uh, it really doesn't matter at that point. Uh, potassium was at two, and that's pretty much where you know a lot of the other oils were so consistent. The boron was 23, and uh, the boron can be all over the scale uh, for that, but in this case, it's sort of right in the middle with everybody else at 23. Uh, silicon was 15, and that is pretty much consistent with some of the other oils that I have tested, so nothing too far out of whack there. The calcium was at 12.53. And, uh, and that's strange because the UA, the used oil sample uh, that I did was, was uh, a bit, you know, more or, or less than what this one is. And uh, just keep in mind the previous oil that I had in it was higher in calcium. So I'm thinking there's a little bit of residual uh, overreach on that. So, you know, what was left in the engine probably added to this. It helped bring it up just a tad bit. Uh, so it's 1253. Uh, magnesium was at 364, and uh, that was within the specs as far as what we're doing on anything. Uh, the phosphorus was at 570, and that is pretty much consistent with uh, everything else that we're doing. The zinc was at 665, and keep in mind, uh, again, uh, the higher zinc in the past engine oil changes probably helped bring it up just a tad. So nothing, nothing to fear there uh, when you do oil changes like this and you got used oil results. You're going to have residuals from the past oils that have to be taken into account. But overall, uh, we ended up with a 56.3 for the uh, SUS viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this, this viscosity you know did drop okay so you know we we had a little bit of a drop in the viscosity there but it's still it's right on the cusp of the light side of uh, 5w30 and then uh, the C CST viscosity as I discussed in the previous video 
this oil held up. It stayed at a 9.14. It made it 200, 200 hours and it stayed right there in the cutting edge of light for a 5W30, but it stayed within range. So 200 hours of use, folks. That's right, 200 hours of engine runtime, and it still managed to hang in there. Uh, the flash point was at 420, so uh, it didn't do too terribly bad in that aspect. And then uh, the fuel, I don't ever have fuel problems. It stays consistent as nothing, really. Uh, antifreeze, water, all that cooling, all that stuff, nothing in the oil. So we know that Duratec it does not at this time have a water pump problem. Uh, the insoluble stayed very consistent. I was using the uh, Pure Later Boss filter, and that has never changed for me. Uh, and then the total base number at the end of the run, remember it started out like a 4.9 as a V8 uh, virgin oil sample and then it ended up after 200 hours at a 2.1. Well, that is not the lowest I've ever ran in oil. I have ran oils at 200 hours and ended up with a 1.7, okay? And it's still good. It still has a total base number. Uh, that is still viable, and that's why they say that I can run it to 13 and see where it goes. Uh, granted, I'm getting down there, but hey, 200 hours, uh, over 10,000 miles, you can't argue with that. So the oil held up, everything worked out good, and uh, I got a wasp that's looking at me really strangely. Ah, well, let's hope that he doesn't dive bomb me here soon. But either way, uh, yeah, springtime, gotta love it. But uh, the oil... Yes, the oil did turn out well for this uh, 3.5 Duratec at the 200 hour mark. So would I use it again and run it to 10,200 hours? Absolutely. Uh, no problems with it. It worked great. And uh, I can say that the valve train, everything, the engine was quiet. So uh, definitely a viable oil if you want to run long term and uh, all that. So, you know, I used it in... Let's see, but I got it in my Toyota, I got it in my Ford Ranger, I bought 10 gallons of it, you know, I'm just dumping it in everything. So, uh, yeah, it's a good oil and all, and I, I may buy more in the future. I, I do like it, uh, I think it's quiet, I don't hear lifters, I don't hear clatter, and I don't hear the uh, VCTs and, and cam phasers knocking themselves to death, so, hey, everything's cool, and I do like this oil. But again, I'm just going to say I like it for now. I'm going to move to another one. Uh, then again, I like a lot of oils. So you can't narrow me down to any one thing. And uh, I like to take and check everything out. So anyway, that's a VAO sample. So if you're questioning whether or not the 3.5 and 3.7 Duratex can run on this, absolutely. Uh, they're not the EcoBoost. Remember that. These are the NAs, non aspirin you know. So... Yeah, you want to use them, knock yourself out. It's good to go. Give me my thumbs up on it on this aspect. Anyways, Mac T and my feet at the floor today. I'm having a great day. I want you to have a great day too. Panda One's got some great music. And Mercy Girl, she's always got some one-liners for you. And uh, Project Herbie, folks, watch those videos. Remember, subscribing and liking definitely helps me out in the end. And... Uh, all I can say is keep watching them because they are a complete video repair. There is nothing that hasn't been fixed as far as the Project Turby goes. And you can find all sorts of gold mine information on how to repair and uh, <laughs> refurbish your Ford Edge. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.